The topic of is AI really killing developer jobs is one that comes up really frequently. So are we coding ourselves out of our job? Software developers listings are down a lot over the last five years. Now I'm going to go through that a little bit, but here's the plot twist. AI engineering posts are up over 200%. So what's really happening here? Are we witnessing the death of development or are we just watching the same old song and dance that we've seen in every major text shift? Is this dot-com 2.0, crypto collapse 3.0, or something completely different? So I've been tracking something pretty fascinating. And companies that fire developers to go AI are now desperately hiring them back at premium rates. Why? Well, today I'm gonna break down what I'm actually seeing here and dive into where the development jobs are going. Let's talk about this today. <laughs> Welcome to Startup Hack. I'm Spencer, and here at Startup Hack, we train software developers and build custom software solutions for companies. With a decade of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years of software development, I've mastered transforming tech teams of products. All right, so the panic around AI killing developers' jobs is missing the bigger picture. We're not seeing replacements. We're seeing the same transformation cycle that happened with every major tech shift. Let me break some of these down, and following our similar pattern, I'm gonna go into some uh, articles here, and then we're gonna talk about some of these and my take on these. So I really like this article here. It says the recurring cycle of development replacement. So it talks about the recurring cycle of development replacement hype, right? We see a technology trigger. We see this peak of inflation. We see the trough of disillusionment. We see the slope of enlightenment and then the plateau of product productivity. And that's, you know, then when you actually find, um, pr you know, useful tech. So, and she's going to, this article goes through here and talks about some of these, uh, some of these that we've seen over time here. Now, they're going to go from originally there was the no code to AI assisted, right? So originally there was the no code, low code revolution, right? Then the cloud revolution where everything was going to move to the cloud, right? Then there was the offshore development wave. Oh my gosh, we're going to pay all these offshore developers and we're going to lose all the a uh, US jobs. And now we're seeing the AI code assistant revolution, right? This isn't new. We've seen this pattern before. Jobs still stay around. Yes, there's little shifts with each of these and there's evolutions that happen in the market. What's that evolution we're going to see? Well, let's talk a little bit about this. This one's another article where somebody goes through and gives an example of some code and how they uh, use AI to do some code stuff, right? Here's this part of the article that I really like. The jobs that are actually disappearing. He's saying junior developers are kind of tough, right? They might be at higher risk because AI can spit out some basic crud for you. Copy and paste programmers, those who don't actually learn problem solving skills. Frankly, I've never loved hiring these developers anyways. Developers who refuse to learn new technologies. I get this fairly frequently too. I refuse to learn to use AI. That's not a good idea right now, right? We do need to be using this. Low risk, senior developers with strong architectural skills. They're still gonna be around, they're not going anywhere. Full stack developers. See, they're still here, right? Somebody who can understand context, business context, and turn it into code developers who can effectively collaborate. So this is a quote from the article. After analyzing hiring trends, productivity metrics, and industry forecasts, here's my conclusion. AI isn't killing developers' jobs, it's killing bad developer jobs. The question isn't whether AI will replace developers, is whether you'll be a developer who gets replaced by another developer using AI. Very similar to what I tell my developers all the time. They say, hey, is AI gonna replace us? I say no, but a developer who knows how to use it might, right? This one talks about welcome to the slop factory. They say there's gonna be a two tier AI system and basically it's those who know how to use it versus those who don't. And there were some interesting parts that, that talk about some of these things here, right? Um, and this is where we see the beginning where we see, see this talk about vibe coding, right? Then there's a commonality here. There's a lie, literally and metaphorically, the skillless and untalented who use AI as a tool to hack together some spaghetti-like mess of code they can't understand until it no longer fits into their AI-enabled editor of choice anyways, who go on to trumpet how great it is, post it on X, say Stack Overflow is over, and move on to the next project in their own process of GitHub padding and engagement farming. So like, you know, how many different clones of Flappy Birds can we see? I see this on X all, all the time where they're like, look, it generated a game. You're like, I've seen that same game like 15 times now, right? Because that's it. It's being copied. It's being regurgitated. Definitely just regurgitated. Eat something. Regurgitate it, right? Now, next article here, and I'm flying through these because I've got a ton of stuff here. This is an interesting part that we're starting to see because I get this all the time. Oh, but what about this thing where it, here's the problem. If you didn't know this, Ella Marina is a popular benchmark for large language models and has been accused of giving preferential treatment to AIs made by big tech firms, potentially enabling them to game their results. 
this is definitely happening. If you don't believe this is happening, you haven't been around money long enough. <laughs> AI benchmarking platform is helping top companies rig their model performances. This is pretty awesome, right? We all knew it was happening, but now we're actually starting to see it, right? So the go-to benchmark, uh, da, 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 da. however, researchers have claimed that the benchmark is skewed, granting major LLMs undisclosed private testing practices that give them an advantage over open source LLMs. The research published their findings on April 29th. So you can go check out this, this, uh, this article here, right? And this is just like, surprise, money buys things. Anybody on this? I what to tell you. Um, so the, the tech job market is coming back, but it's not what you remember. Let me give you kind of the, the footnotes to this, right? It goes through a whole bunch of this. They're going to talk about it. The biggest thing that we're going to see, and I'm going to short, uh, short circuit this for you, are full stack software development jobs down? Yes. They're down for a few reasons. If you actually looked at the, grant, the trend, trending graphs, you're going to actually see that the job market went up. It peaked at COVID. During COVID, it was so stupid to hire developers. Developers were getting paid literally twice what they should have been. There was a massive bubble. So anybody who's judging a, a salary offered today versus a salary offered in 2022, 2023, that's ridiculous. And the reason why is because money was free. The government was pumping so much money into the economy. This is an undisputed fact. They were pumping so much money in the economy. Interest rates were literally at zero. Money was free. If you don't think these tech companies were staffing up to vote off the islands, totally was going to happen. And sure enough, now we're seeing them staff off the islands, just like you saw in those articles. What's happening? Are good developers, are some good developers getting cut? Yeah, because whole projects are having to get cut. Microsoft recently just did a layoff and I actually covered it here. The initial report said it was going to be managers. I followed that initial report. Turns out there was actually a lot of developers who got cut in it. But again, most of that was on projects that got cut. That wasn't even actually bad developers. Microsoft cut a handful of large projects. And in that, there was a lot of developers. So you're seeing even not only people getting voted off the islands, but even projects, right? They staffed up projects that they could spend money on when money was free. Now when money's more, much, much more expensive, surprise, it's not, they're not going to keep those around. So this is, it's not surprising to me to see that we're going to uh, see, you know, uh, these development. So the AI job or software development jobs ran up at a peak. We've since started to see the layoffs, not a surprise. What's coming back isn't necessarily the software development jobs. The jobs that have been posted over the last, um, over this year, the jobs posted this year, the jobs for AI engineers are up 200%. Where are the software developer jobs? They're not going away. They're coming up with a new title. So it's the same old dance, a new partner. Remember when drag and drop tools were going to eliminate all developers or when cloud would make system administrators obsolete, right? I've actually had two different mainframe guys come on and comment and talk about how in uh, the late nineties, they were told that when servers came on, the mainframes were going to go away here, they are 2025. And they say there's a high demand because they can't hire any of them. Every few years, a new shiny tool comes along and promises to make software developers extinct. And yet here we are. What actually happens isn't replacement. It's a role transformation at higher salary points. No code didn't eliminate developers. It created no code specialists earning more than traditional developers. The cloud didn't kill system administrators. They became DevOps engineers. And now DevOps engineers are in high demand. AI is following the exact same pattern. Transforming roles, not eliminate them. So software developer job postings are down. Yeah, surprise. But AI engineering listings have skyrocketed over 200% year over year. So what am I telling you? I'm telling you for a software developer, start learning some AI and get it onto your resume and start talking and showing about that. If you want to, I've got a whole playlist. Check out my channel, hit the playlist section, I've got a whole playlist full of free code samples and show you how to build out your own AI server for under $500. So you can get that onto your resume. Companies are literally rebranding the same role with AI buzzwords to attract talent and investors key investors you think the investors aren't watching which jobs they're posting you, you're you're trying to get investor money you're going to go show all these ai jobs that you're posting for right oh now we need to raise some money because we need these ai developers they're all the same skill set with a couple of ai buzzwords built in it's like when every company suddenly became cloud first overnight without changing their core technology i've seen startups over and over again rebrand from full stack developer to ai powered systems this is what's happening right now Development jobs are not going away. According to a recent IBM study, 
over 2,000 CEOs were uh, were interviewed, and over 20 and only 25% of AI initiatives delivered any kind of expected returns. And yet, 64% of companies are continuing to adopt AI. They're doubling down. This is why we're going to see more AI jobs coming. More than half of hiring specifically because their AI experiments need actual humans to make them work. It's the classic hype, hype cycle. Promise the moon, then quietly hire the people you said you'd replace. So building software is like conducting an orchestra. AI can play instruments, but someone needs to direct the symphony. You can have the world's most talented musicians, but without a conductor, you get chaos, not music. AI excels at writing individual functions, boilerplate code, and giving you some code consulting because it can do that pattern matching really fast. But it can't architect the system. It's not going to see how systems are connected together, and it's definitely not going to innovate for you. The most valuable skill in software isn't writing code, it's architecting solutions and innovation. AI can generate per, like some perfect code snippets, but it's gonna completely miss the point. The one I like to give an example of all the time is, AI was actually asked uh, if buying uh, a set of Christmas trees in January was a good deal, right? And it said, yeah, you should absolutely buy these. It doesn't understand a lot of context. Now, if your company has systems that aren't connected, reach out to us because here at Startup Pack, our specialty is connecting systems. So we can help you get those built out. Check out startuppack.com slash Spencer so we can help you out. Now, there's a massive chasm between AI demos and actual production implementations that deliver value. I've consulted with companies that spent a lot of money on AI initiatives that never made it past the pilot phase. Building an AI chatbot is easy. Building one that reliably increases customer satisfaction is extraordinarily difficult. Giving one that won't give wrong answers, wrong answers is even harder. The engineering challenge of deploying AI at scale are being dramatically understated by these executives. So when you hear Anthropic saying that over 50% of all white collar jobs are going to be gone in three years, what's he doing? He's trying to sell his stock. He wants to make sure Anthropic is at the top of every headline right now because that's what's going to pump his stock. So remember how AI, because the funny thing is when you go listen to the podcast of his own engineers, they'll tell you about all the limitations they're hitting. So remember how AI was supposed to be fully automated and how it was supposed to automate everything, right? Remember Sora, the big thing that was going to like knock Hollywood out of the water? Yeah, two years. We still haven't heard about it, right? The, a human in the loop is making a massive comeback. The most successful AI implementation enhanced human capabilities rather than attempting to try to replace humans. So in my years of experience, it shows that technology works best when it, when it respects the re irreplaceable value of humans. Now, recent research indicate, suggests that AI benchmark platforms are being gamed by major tech companies. This is huge. So when you hear about, oh, this new model came, was 10% better than last time? Of course it was. It was the biggest ones are getting the, the answers to the test. If every student got given the answer key, they'd get a lot better at their tests, right? It's like, you know, and so the, this means the AI capabilities we're seeing in demos might not reflect real world performance. Surprise. Did Microsoft release everything they showed a couple of weeks ago at MS Build? Are all of those products out? No. A lot of them were demos. How about Google? They released a whole bunch of stuff. Not all of it. Or they, excuse me, they demoed a whole bunch of stuff. Very little of it was released to the public. The gap between marketing promises and actual AI performance is wider than most people want to admit. So the general general AI bubble is deflating as companies discover spe specified domain specific AI delivers better ROI. Let me restate that. What's happening is people are niching down. As you niche down, this is what happens when a bubble and hype bursts. It mirrors what I've seen over and over with technologies. Companies are realizing they need engineers who understand both AI tools and their specific business domain knowledge. The future winners will be developers with deep expertise in particular verticals, not generic AI prompters. Now, AI isn't replacing developers. It's changing what skills matter in development. Junior developers with AI assistance can still contribute at a higher level much earlier in their career. The career ladder is shifting from raw coding abilities to system thinking, problem solving, and soft skills. The parts of development that AI automates are precisely the parts most developers find tedious anyways. <laughs> I've never heard of a software developer who wasn't busy. It's because there's always a longer list of things for them to build and implement and deploy than there is for them to just simply sit around and code. So what remains is the creative strategic work that developers actually want to focus on anyways. So everyone who wants to build AI, but mo 
so everybody wants to build AI, but nobody really can find the talent to do it properly. And I've watched companies promote regular developers into AI engineers after a two week course and then wonder why the project fails. The quality gap between elite AI practices and average implementation is enormous. So if you're a software developer, best thing you can do, get started building stuff with AI. Best way to learn, as I tell everybody, start writing code, dig in. There's so many great tools, start learning them. Many AI initiatives were launched on faith during the hype cycle without a clear path to success. The question was never asked, should we do this and what's the return on this investment? It's just everybody was so scared they'd miss out if they don't slap AI somewhere on their front page. This reckoning is happening and we're starting to see it. Now, if your company has systems that aren't connected and you want some help, or you would like a really great strategy for building out some AI implementations that actually solve a real problem in your organization, reach out here at Startup Pack. Uh, hit, hit us up at startuppack.com slash Spencer. Now, best compliment you can give me is to leave a comment down below. I love and I answer all of them personally. Here at Startup Pack, we love to train software developers in our licensed coding boot camps, as well as to build custom software solutions for a company. Here's some great information about some of our services. Hi, my name is Spencer Thomason, and I'm a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and a solid 25 years in software development, I've mastered the art of transforming technology teams and products. So what is a fractional CTO? This is where you can contract someone like myself to come into your organization and get the benefits of a seasoned CTO without having to employ me full time. In today's fast paced world, efficiency, security, and product scaling aren't just goals, they're necessities. My passion is building impactful products and enhancing organizational efficiencies through technology. From startups to small businesses, my approach leverages lean methodologies to not just meet, but exceed your strategic goals. Whether it's through executive mentoring, cloud system architecture, or launching a minimum viable product swiftly, my aim is to make a significant impact right from the start. Recognized in the Arizona startup ecosystem, my journey has been about creating value and fostering innovation. I have led technology for companies like GoDaddy, SRP, and Wells Fargo, and turned challenges into milestones. I've taken this learning and launched seven of my own brands, and now I want to help you. So if you're looking for a fractional CTO who brings a wealth of experience, strategic vision, and a proven track record, let's connect. Together we can build technology that not only drives your business forward, but also makes a difference. Technology leadership redefined to fit your needs. So reach out today.